Hello, I'm Philip Moon, Vice President of Products and Intellectual Property Development at Channel Enablers, a division of Miller Hyman. We're fortunate to have joining me by phone today from Raleigh in North Carolina, Rick Noble. Rick is the Program Manager of Global Channel Sales and Business Development at Red Hat. Welcome, Rick, and thanks for your time today. Oh, sure. Glad to be able to join you today, Philip. Rick, uh, Red Hat has had some pretty tremendous commercial success and rapid growth over the past few years. The channel has certainly been a key part of your success, so today we'd like to ask you some questions to explain perhaps the secret of your success and how you've worked with channel enablers. Sounds great. Be glad to uh, share those insights. Great, Rick. Thanks. So perhaps you could begin by just telling listeners a little bit more about Red Hat, the products it offers through channels, and your part of the business. Sure. So Red Hat, as many people may know or may not, we are um, a Linux-based company, sell software globally, and uh, the organization that I'm with is primarily focused on the business partner channel. Been in this kind of environment for many, many years, so always very excited to uh, to share perspectives when it relates to um, the partner community and partner ecosystem. Our organization specifically supports all of the regions around the globe and those regions that are working with the broad ecosystem of partners, whether it's distribution partners, ISVs, global SIs, or even our OEM partners. And uh, what we've done is we've offered our range of products. We sell products from operating system products to middleware products, storage products, and even into the cloud. All of our solutions are available to these partners. Traditionally, the Red Hat solutions are sold to enterprise-level customers. That's part of the value and the benefit of Red Hat and uh, our open source solutions is that they are hardened solutions that really provide a value add for enterprise-level customers. So um, that's the audience that we support. That's the function that I'm in, and uh, that's kind of where Red Hat is. We've been growing fairly well over the last several years to the point where uh, we believe that Um, The mainstay of our business is being delivered from our partner ecosystem. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, Thanks, Rick. And what would be some of the key industry verticals that Red Hat's involved in? Sure, it's a great question. Um, Our our products certainly are available to any particular industry, and we really don't have a definitive focus on specific verticals, but we have had success in several. The key areas that we've uh, had some of the most success with some of the larger names uh, around the world from an industry perspective are the telco industry, uh, particularly in the finance industry, healthcare, and in some of our EMEA marketplaces and North America marketplaces are government industries. Right, so they're all sort of mission critical industries that you're mentioning there. Absolutely. So we've been working together for a few years now, uh, Red Hat and Channel Enablers. Can you tell us something about the business challenge or need that you were addressing when we became involved and perhaps who at Red Hat was involved in the decision to engage Channel Enablers? Sure, Philip. So as as many folks um, in in our kind of industry or our kind of situation may experience, the, uh, the larger vendor IT entities have a need to be able to sell their products and get their products to their customers using a set of channel partners. For Red Hat, only over the past uh, six or seven years have we really engaged in using indirect channels or business partners. And so one of our biggest challenges was trying to develop the skills of our salespeople that were going to be focused on that partner ecosystem or that set of solution providers. So our real pain point was channel skills, in other words, not just what does a partner do, but how do you engage at the executive level of a channel partner? How do you talk to executives about the value to them of why to leverage your products and sell your products compared to the other myriad of offerings that they have? Uh, Specifically, some of the challenge we were looking to um, leverage some real expertise on or things like sitting down and doing detailed level planning with those partner executives, not coming out and just selling on a quarterly basis, but how can we spend some time planning? How can we spend some time talking about financial values and benefits? How can we help them understand the return on investment, not just because we have wonderful products? And, and that was some of the, the, the biggest 
um, pain point or problem that we were trying to solve. And then beyond that, as many folks would think, wow, you got all that training, and isn't that great? Well, you've got to have ongoing training. And we were looking for a solution that would not only provide us that first training experience, but also to be able to maintain that skill level, to refresh that skill level, and kind of on a regular basis, test that skill level to make sure it wasn't just a one and done. And fortunately here at Red Hat, uh, the senior executive that really was sponsoring this was Mark Endweiler. Mark is the vice president of Global Channel Sales, been at Red Hat uh, about six years now, and he was brought in specifically because of his channel skills and abilities and the desire to really turn Red Hat's sales organization into one that was a partner-friendly sales organization but had the real skills to be able to do it. And Mark felt passionate about uh, ensuring that we provided skills to the folks on our uh, sales organization that uh, that would you know not only give them the skills but help them feel like they were providing some value add to the partners that they were calling on. So that's uh, what I'm hearing from you is that you went from a transition into that uh, heavily partner centric model, and you really needed your people to be business people to be able to sit down with partner business owner executives and engage with them about their business or your joint business and how to grow that together. And I guess I'm also hearing you wanted that to be a profession, so it's not just a one-time event, but an ongoing uh, professional development at Red Hat. Yeah, absolutely, Philip. As you can imagine, um, in, 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 the, in the environment where you're calling on executives that own their businesses, they've been in this, this, uh, this business for a long, long time, they're not looking for people that are slick at rattling off speeds and fees, they're looking at somebody that's going to be a consultant to their business, who would have some professional skills, who would be able to help them take our solutions and make those solutions um, easily understandable to their sales organization, but also understandable from a standpoint of how to provide value add. And you know, they're going to look for a person that's got you know more than just book knowledge, but some confidence and competence and what they're talking about and how it can have a value to their business. So it really was trying to develop you know, some professionalism and some credibility that, uh, that folks would recognize Red Hat as being a value add to them as a vendor and a uh, partner loyal type of organization. When you and Mark started this initiative some time ago, uh, at the time um, before you began this, you know, what impact were you know, not having those skills having on your business? Uh, could you point to a particular sort of issue or set of problems there? Yeah, I think the biggest challenge, and, and again, this has been a little bit of the evolution of Red Hat over the last several years. The biggest challenge was Red Hat's success was largely based on our premier product, which is our Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system solution. Mm -hmm. And it was very easy to be able to call on partners and sell them on that. Uh, we were recognized as the leader in the world on that solution. And sometimes that's an easy conversation to have. It's, there's not so much competition against it. It's almost like anybody who wanted Linux, it was easy to sell. The challenge that we saw, or what kind of crept up on us, was being able to help partners understand our entire range of product offerings. As we tried to sell more of our middleware solutions and our virtualization solutions, you really had to have the ability to differentiate yourself from the competition. And that's where partners, you know, as we dug underneath some of the information about our sales, we were finding a, a lot of our partner community was only selling our Red Hat Enterprise Linux. They just were not you know, choosing to proactively lead with our middleware solutions and virtualization solutions. So I guess they, they were not able to sell it to their own customers and explain the whole value proposition to their customers in turn. Absolutely, absolutely. So that was, that was really the, 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 the big noticeable difference. Sure, the sales were doing well, but we weren't broadening the portfolio and we felt like we weren't giving a good, uh, a good amount of um, transfer of knowledge to the partner community, their sales reps, on being able to make those calls on the customers. Yep, great. So how did you come to hear about Channel Enablers and, and why did you decide to engage us? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So um, there, were, there were two things, primarily Mark Ensweiler's relationship with Channel Enablers from his previous position in the industry. So Mark having had a long experience of being a 
a partner-focused individual, had run across uh, channel enablers. And so certainly one of his first calls was, I've seen this organization, I've experienced this organization, I want to bring them in and have them uh, share with us what they can, they can provide. And so that forced uh, several of us on the team to go out and do some homework. Um, and so we did some work um, investigating some references as well as looking at uh, some information on your website that provided that, that final, um, we believe we want to uh, work with a skilled organization and one that obviously our executive had some very high level of uh, complimentary comments about. And, and that, was, that was the starting point of bringing the Channel Enablers team in to provide, first to understand what we wanted, but then for you to be able to provide a, uh, a, a scope of work that would meet our needs and clearly was um, above what uh, our expectations were as we were comparing it to other solutions and offerings. Oh, great. Well, thank you very much for engaging us. So let's move on. Let's, if you could briefly describe the, the approach that you developed. What was the solution, if you like, that you rolled out to your channel sales field organization, and how did it meet the need that you, you talked about earlier? Sure. So as I indicated earlier, we're a global organization. We have about 120 partner um, executives around the globe in all of our geographies. So naturally, one of the first challenges was, how do we get training to all of those people? Mm -hmm. So as we engaged with channel enablers, uh, the first thing we wanted to understand was, give us a roadmap or kind of set of modules of different levels of training classes that would take an individual from a entry level skill to a you know mid level, intermediate level, and, and kind of an expert level. So a catalog of courses that gave you some a modular approach, and then you know we can't possibly bring everybody into one location for training. Is there a way that you could provide a range of online courses and face-to-face -face training courses. Right. So that was kind of the challenge that we provided, and uh, the solution that, that we were excited to offer was exactly what we had asked for, about a series of eight different courses. Uh, four were online-level courses, so people could take them at any time. Perfect solution for salespeople. They're never around uh, during normal business hours because they're out selling, so they could take online courses at any time, provided some very basic um, catch up or entry level information and then they could attend face to face classes that we would offer in various sites around the geography and around the globe. Right. And of course training's one thing, but it's also the tools and processes they need to do their job. Oh yeah, I certainly don't want to undersell that. So um, that was kind of what we started with was give us a vision, give us an idea, give us a, a, a high level formula of what you would like to be able to deliver to meet our needs. And then honestly, um, as you mentioned, the tools, it certainly was an additional selling point for working with the channel enablers team. Having a set of tools that um, one of our reps, they can actually download on their system. These aren't just big spreadsheets. These are some great interactive tools that allow them to do not only meeting the needs and answering questions for a training class, but it was bring back with them to use, to go back to, to reference, to get together with other members on the team, to have their managers actually come and ask them about some of the tools they were using to help them be more effective. So training is great. You can always refer back to an online course. You can try to look back at your notes. But having a regular set of tools, like some of the tools that you offer in your channel financials or partner planning classes, were some of the great tools that, uh, that we used when we first kicked this off and are still using today. If any, what problems arose, arose during the implementation of that? Well, um, I'm sure some folks will chuckle who might be listening to this. Um, certainly, I come from a sales background, and you talk about training, trying to get salespeople to commit time to training was the biggest challenge. Yeah, can, can we do it in a day? Can we do it in half a day? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's always a quarter end that you're approaching, and if it's not the quarter end, then you're trying to get a quick start in the beginning of the next quarter. And sure. so the, the, the biggest challenge was not only, you know, not, 
surely the channel sales organization, the leaders of the, of the sellers, understood the need to develop skills. It was a matter of prioritizing, and it was always a last uh, priority for them to think about. They knew it was important, but there were a lot of other things. So it took, I would say it took a few quarters for us to get everybody to start recognizing if you could plan far enough in advance, you gave everybody the chance to get prepared to do your prerequisites online and then attend a class. But it took us at least a couple quarters, and, and so that was a challenge. You know, here we are engaged with an organization with competent skills, quality trainers, great tools, but we weren't getting any folks uh, to come to, uh, you know, you can lead a, a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Yep. Finally doing some, uh, some, you know, outward planning and long-term planning, uh, we were able to get a couple of geographies, primarily our Asia-Pacific geography and our MIA geography, they kind of adopted it earliest, mm-hmm. and then they were able to share some of the stories and best practices and successes with the other geographies to get them on board. Right, so they, they became evangelists for the whole program by the sounds of things. There you go, there's a good term. What were the outcome of the initiatives? What, this was your baby that you're rolling out here. What were some of the results that you achieved? Yeah, um, we did. We actually set some objectives, and particularly as we worked with channel enablers on, you know, what do we hope to accomplish? It's great that you could deliver courses. It's great you can provide tools. Um, it's great that you lay out a, a series of uh, or a set of resources that can help us provide the training. But you know, what, what was our measure of success? So, so the objectives that we were after were, you know, um, a certain percentage or, or or at least the majority of our partner selling resources, our channel account managers and partner account managers to take classes, not only would they take the online classes, but also take the face-to-face classes. And then from that, not just one. Guys, we were, we were, we were expecting to see the team progress to what I would call a kind of a level 100 to a level 200 to a level 300 set of classes. And then you say, okay, just because they took the classes, okay, there's a check mark. We made success. But that wasn't what we were after. We also wanted to ensure that the teams were utilizing these skills and that they were working with partners to put them to use. And the way that we actually saw results from that, we actually use an online tool for a partner plan. We had not been that effective at um, formally getting a lot of partner plans into this tool. After taking the training, that became a great measure for us that folks had adopted some skills, had learned some, um, some, some tricks and techniques, if you will, to set aside time with the partner, develop a plan, and then actually get that plan into the system. Once you start having a plan, once you can sit down with a partner and talk about, hey, how are we going to do over the four quarters, not just the next quarter, yep. um, we found out that a lot more partners were a lot more engaged with us. So, so attending the training going through multiple levels of the training, and then seeing it put into action by um, getting partners to work with them to put the plans in place was kind of our measures of success and the objectives that we were happy to see uh, you know, the results from. Right. Sounds like you're saying that partners really noticed a difference in Red Hat's approach as well. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I wish I could say that we went out and, and surveyed them to get that information, but certainly, as anyone in the industry will know, Partners will do business with people they enjoy doing business with. If you can bring value add to them, you'll continue to do business with them. They're not going to sit down and take the time to spend an hour and a half and put a partner plan together if they don't think the person on the other end is going to work it, use it, and bring value from it. And by seeing a lot more partner plans in the system, um, that was proof to us that the partners certainly recognized that uh, that there was a difference and that uh, it helped them. It helped them identify, wow, I don't have to go talk to my customer about just one product, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. I can go talk to a customer about a multitude of solutions all from one vendor. And, uh, and, and again, that's, that's kind of where the proof in the pudding came out. So if we're to recap, how would you summarize perhaps the main benefits that Red Hat derived from the program? Yeah, so I would say, um, you know, if I were kind of listing them, clearly um, the main benefit was collecting skills from someone that had them for our partner community. You know, a lot of a lot of people will try to do their own thing. They think they've got people that can train their own people. But the big benefit was we were easily able to find a set of resources and skills and, and deploy them immediately. 
first benefit versus Red Hat having to kind of develop its own. Second benefit, a nice consistent level of partner skill training across our partner organization. So you didn't have folks in Asia Pacific learning how to work with partners way differently than the team down in Latin America. So consistency was another benefit. Third benefit was certainly the flexibility of the offerings and solutions that Channel Enablers provided that enabled our teams to be able to finally get engaged in putting their own training plans together. Online courses available at any time, you know, nice, you know, good skilled people from Channel Enablers to come in and lead the classes when we were able to get folks together face to face. So, you know, great flexibility as far as the material. And then lastly, you know, the benefit of really advancing our folks. As I indicated before, it wasn't a matter of just taking one class. We wanted to ensure these folks continued their training, maintained their skills, and the proof would be paid out by their value that they were delivering to their partners. And we could see that simply in our partner plans. And, you know, we actually are having higher sales engagement across a broader level of our portfolio rather than being just a Linux, an open source Linux only solution provider. Great. Well, it's easy to see the results that their companies produce. That's public domain. It's certainly been a very successful company. You mentioned that, you know, you were involved with us all around the world. You know, one or two people, you know, can't deliver a program like that. So you've worked with us in lots of different countries. Do you have any comment on the various people that you worked with at Channel Enablers in these other regions? Yeah, so the folks, and again, my engagement is from a little bit higher level. So I did not have the fortune and opportunity to travel to some of the the more exotic locations around the world, yeah, to be able to do the training. But certainly our first engagement from an executive level was Bram Schneider, an executive at Channel Enablers, had the relationship and the association with Mark Ensweiler brought a quality of service to providing a scope of work, but not just providing it, but taking time to learn from us on what we really needed so you could provide the scope of work. The other individual that I believe took over primarily on a on a global, I would call it a delivery requirement. You know, somebody that was watching over is each geography trying to get some training into their region to utilize the classes that Red Hat has subscribed to. And that was Greg Nutter. Um, did a very good job of of continuing to proactively encourage. Uh, I believe Greg has done a number of classes. I actually uh, sat through a class a couple of years ago that he was the uh, instructor on. And the thing that I found was um, y- your folks could speak, the folks at Channel Enablers could speak from a level of experience, and that helps when you're in an audience of folks that are trying to learn. They don't want to hear somebody tell you, well, this is the way it should work. They want to say, here's how I've experienced that and some of the things that I can share with you on how you ought to approach it. Yeah, you never you never know what question you're going to get in the field, do you? Oh, a- absolutely. You know, you can imagine when you're with a bunch of uh, eight person- type eight personality sales folks, um, you're going to be put on the edge of your chair right away. So um, good, good, good quality results from, from Greg and then some of the uh, individual instructors in some of the various regions. Unfortunately, you know, I don't have their names, but I do know that um, the way Channel Enablers works is you have several folks that are dedicated to a region. For example, the person who does all the training in our EMEA office locations is the same person that's been doing it for the last three years, and it's been a it's been a great help because you've got some continuity. They see people from the past, everybody recognizes their value, and they're uh, more appreciative to be able to come to some of the classes. So what's next, Rick? Uh, how do you see us working together in the future? Well, that's a great question. Uh, right now, we currently have an agreement with, uh, with Channel Enablers that will take us through next year. Um, we, as, I, would be, I would be kidding folks to say that our training is done. So uh, we certainly are always bringing on new people. So part of our continued agreement or, or interaction with Channel Enablers will be managing the new partner uh, account managers that come into the business, 
helping them and enlisting your services to get them caught up to speed with some of our more senior level folks. The second area that, uh, well, there's two more areas. The second area that we're really looking to try to do a better job ourselves, and certainly by no fault of some of the offerings that Channel Enablers has offered, it's back to the point of prioritizing the time. Um, our, our, our next engagement where we would see value is spending more time with our management teams. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great, to ch it's great to train the folks that are on the front lines working with the partners, but it certainly helps to develop more skills at the management level so the managers can be inspecting and expecting more from the partner account managers and channel account managers. So the managers can be encouraging. They can be, you know, spending some time understanding what challenges and offering suggestions or, or options to improve. So that's kind of the next area. And then the last area, um, Red Hat over the past few years, we have traditionally focused on what you would call your, your um, standard distribution channels kind of partner organizations, the resellers, solution providers, bars. We are really engaging more with um, global systems integrators, with ISVs, and we want to work with channel enablers on just slightly modifying some of the training that we have that suits our sales folks that are working with those level of partners. We feel like uh, it's a great area for us to expand. It's an area that we may not have as much skill as we think we do, and we'd love to leverage the expertise and experience that channel neighbors can bring to um, assist us in, in, in working with that set of our partner ecosystem. Great. Thank you. So what advice would you offer to another organization that might be facing a, a similar challenge? You know, Phil, that's a great question. Um, as I think about that, uh, I, I would say probably the thing that that made it easiest or smoothest for us at Red Hat was was having an executive level support at the start. Yep. A lot of times you can approach this as a build from the ground, the people on the firing lines, what are the basic requirements, and you keep going up the level of the, of the organization to get approval. Um, we were fortunate enough that Mark, as the Vice President of Global Channel Sales, was, was an advocate um, and a promoter of channel enablers. I think if you start there, that helps not only just to get it through um, you know, various approvals through the organization, but, but with a passion or an acknowledgement or a support at that level, that filters down to the management levels that are out in the field that are going to have to drive folks to take training, to prioritize training, to adopt a certain type of, of skill that folks may not be comfortable with. And I think that helped us move through just the scope of work process quicker, the approval process quicker, and it certainly um, encouraged a lot more engagement at the field level because it had this very visible high executive level support. That, that would be probably the quickest. And then I would say the second thing, again, the pain that I suffered in the early days, if there was any recommendation or suggestion for folks listening is, yes, it's difficult to pull people out of the sales field to take training, but if you plan far enough in advance plan a couple times a year to get the folks trained, it's very easy to find those couple of days. So clearly some, some advice on advanced planning is the way to make this thing uh, to work smoothly, get adoption, get it completely completed, see results, and be able to share those results for uh, encouragement is, is probably the, the two biggest things I would suggest to, um, to avoid any stumbles or slowdowns as you're trying to to see the success from this. Well, thanks, Rick. That's some great lessons for others to take note of. I guess we're nearing the end of our time. Uh, wrapping it all up, in summary, why would you recommend channel enablers to your peers in other organizations? Sure. I'll, I'll be glad to share a few parting comments. So um, my recommendations come from, and then again, so uh, unfortunately folks won't, uh, won't, won't have seen me live, but I've got many gray hairs on my head from being in the channel industry for many, many years, over 20 years, and um, having been around that long, I would say what I saw the most to recommend channel enablers from is quality 
of the skills on covering a high level channel engagement training. Number one, a level of quality, a level of information, a level of tools, and a very simple way of delivering that. Number two, channel enablers did a great job of on the front end notifying me that it was going to take some time for us to spend truly understanding the pain points, really taking the time to make sure we had it mapped out on what needed to be delivered, rather than looking for someone that can, hey, we can get you up and running in 30 to 45 days. Yep. I, I really recommend channel enablers because of the time you spent to truly understand what our needs were, what our requirements were, reviewed it with us a couple of times before we went live, and that makes a big difference. And then lastly, uh, you know, I, uh, I think you know, results speak for themselves. I, I can only acknowledge that uh, the partner community recognized a value add from our sales folks um, after they were able to you know, attend several different modules that, uh, that were offered. And that's what you're after is uh, increasing your value to your partners, growing your business, and being able to provide additional skills that, that you know, your sales folks recognize as, uh, as important to them. Sure. Uh, and I guess that helps keep the team together. You're sending them a message that they're important. They're an important part of Red Hat's business. Absolutely. Well, Rick, uh, thank you so much for spending the time explaining to me and also to other interested indirect channel executives that the kinds of benefits that can flow from equipping your channel sales team with the skills, tools and processes that they really need to be successful. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Um, no, I think, uh, I, think, I think I've think i covered most of it other than, uh, again, I would just, I, I would offer um, if, if there are organizations that are considering channel enablers uh, that may have some questions or uh, just uh, want to get a little bit of a refresher or some ideas on how to approach an engagement with you, I'd be more than willing to uh, spend some time um, offering them any insights that they might ask because I certainly do believe that, uh, that, that we got um, a very good value for our engagement with you, Philip, and um, you know, I'm more than happy to help if anybody wants some other insights, but uh, that would that would wrap it up for me. Oh, that's a great offer. Thank you so much, uh, Rick, and thank you very much for your time. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to ask Rick a question, please contact him through us at info at channelenablers.com. Red Hat are the world's leading provider of open source enterprise IT products and services. If you're watching this on Channel Enablers website or on the Bright Talk indirect sales channel, you can download the Red Hat Fast Facts document from the Attachments tab. For more information, contact us at info at channelenablers.com or visit our website at www.channelenablers.com or the Partner Manager Resource Center which is an online repository of channel best practice articles, and you'll find that at worldwideweb.channelenablers.net. I'm Philip Moon. Thanks again for listening, and have a good day.